Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Contrary to popular belief, a battlefield does not consist of two lines of troops standing on opposite sides. Instead, it is a dynamic environment where having the right weapons and vehicles in the right spot can drastically affect the outcome. For decades, military tacticians have tried to find new ways to move their assets around the battlefield quickly. But it wasn't until the invention of the heavy lift helicopter that this became much easier. Over time, the helicopters doing the lifting have only gotten larger and more powerful. Now, they can easily move tens of thousands of pounds at once, including some of the heaviest guns and vehicles in the world. With cargo hooks and hoists at their disposal, helicopters can use a process called sling loading to move equipment and supplies from one area to another in mere minutes. One of the most crucial vehicle assets in the modern US military is the Humvee. These fast, versatile vehicles can be converted to carry a wide range of weapons, boast varying degrees of armored protection, and travel at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. Despite their ability to move fast while carrying troops and weapons, Humvees are nonetheless limited by the terrain on which they travel. With sling loading, Humvees can be moved from one part of the battlefield to another in minutes. A fully loaded and armored Humvee can weigh up to 14,000 pounds. Fortunately, the CH-47 Chinook helicopter, which is frequently used in sling-loading operations, can lift up to 24,000 pounds at a time via its external cargo hooks. Though the Chinook is a high-value cargo helicopter, it has been in service since the Vietnam War. The CH-53E Super Stallion, on the other hand, is newer and much more powerful. For instance, it can carry up to 36,000 pounds externally, allowing it to lift multiple Humvees at a time. Not only can it fly for extended periods of time while carrying this heavy load, but the helicopter will be stable enough to allow for mid-air refueling throughout the process. This only serves to demonstrate just how powerful these heavy lift copters really are. Regardless of the type of helicopter or type of vehicle being moved, the sling load process remains more or less the same. 
Each aircraft is equipped with a series of internal and external hooks built directly into the fuselage. When an asset needs to be moved, ground troops or helicopter crews will affix it with heavy lifting straps or chains. The helicopter will then move into position, hovering in place so that the straps on the vehicle can be attached to the waiting hooks. After only a brief adjustment, the pilot will be able to lift the vehicle and begin carrying it toward the drop zone. Though it's possible for helicopters like the CH-47 and CH-53 to ferry cargo and vehicles over longer distances, this results in drastically increased fuel expenditure. It also limits the helicopter's altitude, potentially putting it in danger of enemy fire. So, when it comes to moving large amounts of equipment and vehicles quickly and safely, an airdrop is often preferred. Airdrops involve large cargo planes like the C-130, which have rear cargo doors that can be lowered during flight. This allows for large numbers of pallets fixed with self-deploying parachutes to be simply pushed out the back. Cargo loading is generally handled by special crew members known as loadmasters. In a non-airdrop scenario, these men and women are responsible for ensuring Humvees and other vehicle assets are properly secured during flight. This is usually accomplished with chains and tie-down straps, which attach the vehicle to the floor of the cargo bay. If done properly, the vehicle will not move, even if the aircraft takes evasive maneuvers. Airdrops, on the other hand, are very different. In order to secure the load and maximize the delivery, both the vehicles and any cargo or other supplies will be tightly packed onto special heavy-duty pallets. These pallets help keep the load flat, ensuring that nothing shifts when it is dropped out of the cargo door. These not only serve to pull the package out of the back of the plane, but deploy automatically in mid-air bringing the Humvee to the ground safely. But even with all these precautions, it's possible for something to go wrong during the drop process, resulting in damage to the vehicle. <laughs> This is why padding is often included under the vehicle to help absorb the impact of the landing.
One of the most challenging operations a military force can attempt is what's known as a beach landing. This involves moving troops, weapons, and vehicles from a ship to the shore. This can be accomplished using a wide variety of vehicles, including LCACs, or landing craft air cushions, as well as LCUs, or landing craft utility vessels. LCUs have been used in some form or another since World War II. They are generally flat-bottomed, shallow draft vessels with a flat open deck space. Because of their unique design, the boats can effectively beach themselves, allowing any vehicles to simply drive off of them and onto the waiting beach. LCUs and other such vehicles generally operate from ships with well decks. These are water level areas that can be flooded to allow for the deployment of a wide variety of amphibious vehicles and watercraft. When the deck is dry, Humvees and other vehicles can simply drive on and off of the LCU. Once on board, they will be tied down to keep them from shifting while the boat is in transit. Once the well deck is flooded, the ship will simply disembark into the open sea, taking its cargo along with it. Though LCUs can operate from virtually any type of shoreline, they typically aim to pick up and deploy their vehicles on a concrete dock. This provides a more reliable driving surface for Humvees and other vehicles. When the operation is complete, the process simply works in reverse. The LCU will pick up any waiting troops and vehicles and drive them back to the waiting well deck. The average LCU can carry around 350 tons of personnel and equipment, which can translate into several dozen military vehicles. This makes them an invaluable component of any ship-to-shore operation. The Humvee remains a central part of almost every land-based military operation. Because they can move quickly and be instantly configured for a wide variety of scenarios, the Humvee is essential to the safe movement of troops and equipment. In many cases, Humvees will be the first units to take on patrols and other important duties. Clearly, the U.S. military and its allies will go to great lengths to get these vehicles where they need to go.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.